Hi everybody, it's Mr. Garrett again, and we're going to go through uh, special quartic factoring, um, anything x to the fourth or higher, and uh, these are a couple different techniques. There's about six example problems that we'll do, so hopefully you'll uh, learn something, and well, let's get started. So the first type of example that we're going to start off with is when it's a difference of special squares, and you might say, okay, well, we know the difference of squares is a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b. And that's good. That's good if you know that and if you recognize that there's two perfect squares that you're subtracting, we can factor it this way. Um, the problem is when we're looking at something like x to the fourth minus 25, you might say, well, 25 is easy, that's 5 squared. But x to the fourth, that's, that's a perfect fourth. It's not a perfect square. Well, you're right, but we could write this as something squared minus something squared. And that's what we're going to do. I put parentheses here as something squared minus something squared. And really, when I look at this, I'm going to say it's x squared squared, which is x to the fourth, and 5 squared, which is 25. So this statement right here is equivalent to x to the fourth minus 25. Now, if I write this out, this is like my a value from up here, and this is like my b value from up here, and so I can just write out x squared minus 5 and x squared plus 5. And that is my uh, factored form. Now, I also ask myself, can I factor this any further, x squared minus 5? Well, I can't because um, there's no two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 5 and add together to give me 0. Um, same thing here. I can't multiply two numbers together to get me 5 and add together to give me 0. So that's my final form, and that's factored as far as we can go. Now, over here, same idea. I want to say something squared minus something squared. Well, what squared is 16? 4. What squared is y to the fourth? y squared. So 4y squared goes there, and then 9 goes here because 9 squared is 81. Again, I get 4y squared minus 9 and 4y squared plus 9. Now, this one will allow us to do difference of squares again because 4y squared and 9 are perfect squares. So I can split this up and say 2y minus 3, 2y plus 3, and this 4y squared plus 9, sum of squares, we don't have that. So we're just going to leave it as 4y squared plus 9. And that's our final answer. Once we get down to that linear term, we're good to go. All right, so let's do a couple other ones. A couple other examples. We have a to the fourth plus 5a squared minus 6. Now, again, this is something that you might look at and be like, I don't know. But instead of saying a to the fourth, let's make it a squared plus 5a minus 6. And if we do that, we would know that this is a minus 6 a plus 1. And a minus 6, a plus 1, factors to this. Actually, it should be a plus 6, a minus 1. Well, same idea down here. When I factor it, I want to put my two sets of parentheses. And instead of a and a, I'm going to put a squared and a squared, because a squared times a squared is a to the fourth. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, all right, well, let's do plus 6 minus 1. That way I get negative a squared, positive 6a squared. That gives me my positive 5a squared. And then negative, six, uh, negative 1 and positive 6 is negative 6. And that's factored. Now, can I factor a squared plus 6 at all? No. How about a squared minus 1? Well, yeah, a squared and 1 are both perfect squares. So I'm going to factor it to a squared plus 6 and then a plus 1 a minus 1. And that's my completely factored form. Now, on this next example, it's going to be a little trickier. If I had this as 3x squared minus x minus 24, 
Now what I have to do is I have to do some guess and check, or the box method, or something like that. I got 3x and x, that's 3x squared. And I'm just going to guess, and I'm going to say like maybe 8 and 3. And if I use 8 and 3, I'm going to use 8 there and 3 there, because 8 times 3 is 24. That's going to give me 8x, that's going to give me 9x. So I'm going to make that negative, and that positive, and that works. So we got to go back to factoring quadratics, which you can all do. And we're going to say, all right, well, that works. Well, now, instead of being 3x, we're going to make it 3s squared plus 8. And over here, we're going to make it s squared minus 3. Okay? Again, let's check. 3s squared times s squared is 3s to the fourth. 3s squared times negative 3 is negative 9s squared. 8 times s squared is 8s squared. And 8 and negative 3 is negative 24. These two terms give me 3s to the fourth minus s squared minus 24. And that's what we started with. So this right here is our factored form. And we would get that by guess and check and just treating it as though it were a quadratic uh, trinomial. Now, now, we can't factor that any further, and we can't factor that any further, so that is our final answer. And then finally, two other ones. Now, some of you are probably flipping out a little bit when you look at this and say 32z to the fifth minus 2z. Well, we don't know a z to the fifth, but it's not on my sheet. But what's the first thing on your factoring flow chart? Factor out the common monomial. What's common between 32z to the fifth and 2z? Well, 2z is. And if I do that, I get 16z to the fourth minus 1. All right. Now, this is like a difference of uh, special squares, which is going to give me 4z squared plus 1 and 4z squared minus 1. And I say, okay, well, that can't be factored anymore, that can't be factored anymore, but the 4z squared minus 1 can. So let's go ahead and write down the first two again, 4z squared plus 1. And then this becomes 2z plus 1 and 2z minus 1. That is now factored completely, and that's, that's a doozy of a problem. Let's go and finish this last one. What's common in all three terms? Well, an m squared is common in all three terms. That's going to leave me with 36m to the fourth plus 12m squared plus 1. When I look at this, I'm going to say, okay, well, that could be like 6m squared and 6m squared. I'll just guess that. And then let's make this 1 and 1 because 6m squared and 6m squared is 36m to the fourth. 6m squared times 1 and 6m squared times 1 is 6m squared and 6m squared, which is 12m squared. And 1 times 1 is 1. And so that is factored. Now, I can't factor any further because 6m squared plus 1 is not factorable, but I can group them and say it's the quantity squared and give my answer like that. That would be acceptable to be completely factored. So we went through a couple different examples. One, you always have to make sure you have to make sure to um, factor out the common monomial. The second is look to see does it fit into special squares or um, the special square trinomial or quadratic trinomial and then uh, go from there. So good luck. Hope you learned something and we'll see you later.